If you've all been watching my channel for quite some time now over the last couple of years, you know that Saw holds a very special place in my heart. Back when I was only six years old, I watched Saw for the first time. It wasn't just my first horror movie ever, but was also the movie that made me fall in love with the horror genre as well as movies in general. It's what made me want to be a filmmaker, what made me want to study film, and why I fell in love with it in the first place. I owe a lot to the Saw franchise, and as I said, if you've been watching my channel over the last couple of years, you'd know this by now. I am obsessed with this franchise, even with all its highs and all of its really, really big lows. I love all of these movies in their own way, no matter how much I do bag on the really bad ones like Saw 3D, the final chapter, but in their own way, they're all fun, whether it's for the reasons the filmmakers intended or for the complete opposite. But Saul was not confined to just nine movies in a franchise. Back in 2009 and 2010, Konami decided to publish two video games under the title of Saw the Video Game and Saw 2 Flesh and Blood. These games are borderline impossible to find now. For me to stream both games and play them live on the channel right after the release of Spiral from the Book of Saw in 2021, it took some major research and me tracking down copies, which were not cheap either, considering that all distribution of these games have been completely cut off both physically and digitally. You can't buy these games on the PlayStation Store or the Xbox Store on the PS3 and Xbox 360 anymore. You can only find physical copies for Saw the Video Game on PC, PS3 and Xbox 360, and Saw 2 Flesh and Blood was confined to only the Xbox 360 and PS3. While I've been on hiatus from YouTube, however, I did decide to go back and replay both games so I can finally finish my How to Beat series for Saw. With the new movie Saw 10 being released on October 26, 2023 here in Australia, I figured it was time before that movie came out that I finally finished off the series I started long ago with Spiral from the Book of Saw back in 2021. It's been over a year since I've done one of these videos, but I figured it was time for me to return and provide the ways that I found out you could survive every trap in Saw the video game. Out of all nine of these videos I've done thus far, this one being the 10th, this is easily the hardest one I've had to do so far, as not only did it involve me playing through a begrudgingly horrid game, but also, because this is a video game, there isn't anything really obvious in regards to level design or contraption design within the game design for me to figure out how to beat these traps in a efficient way and also one that would cause as little damage and wounds to the people involved. Whether it's Melissa Singh, David Tab, Amanda Young, Oswald McGillicuddy, it really didn't matter. This was one of the hardest ones I've had to put together yet. And I will even say, some of these are not even beatable unless you do them the way they're instructed, and even then I beg to differ that they're beatable. But either way, it's time for me to discuss how to beat every trap in Saw the video game. Just before we get started though, I will be saying I will not be covering things such as Melissa's test, the death mask, the head box, the explosive cube, the shotgun door trap, or the sliding blade. Mainly because the sliding blade and the shotgun door trap do have ways to beat them anyway in regards to quick time events, in regards to just avoiding them in general. And when it comes to stuff like the explosive cube, the head box, and the death mask, these are things mainly for goons that are running around the asylum that David Tapp is in, where they're trying to get a key that is actually hidden inside of David Tapp, you know, William Easton style from Saw 6, but there really is no other way to beat them. I tried, I looked, there really is nothing else and the game doesn't give you enough to really figure out other means or methods of surviving anyway. But there are eight other traps for us to go through throughout Saw the video game and the fuckery that was this video. But hey, I'm gonna provide my best solutions to beat every trap anyway, even though honestly, a lot of them are probably just a bunch of bullshit. Because as I said, from a game design standpoint, this game doesn't do what it's meant to and everything is incredibly flawed. There really is no way to be any of these traps aside from their design purpose because I think the developers and game designers were incredibly lazy with laying anything else out unlike in the films where you can clearly see in the surroundings around them that there are other objects and furniture and other means of escaping and deactivating traps anyway. But starting off immediately with a classic we have the reverse bear trap. This is the first test of Detective David Tapp's trial where he was struck to a chair in the abandoned bathroom with a mechanical contraption a reverse bear trap locked onto his head. The frontal part 
part of the trap was hooked into his upper and lower jaw, which would permanently rip his face open if he couldn't remove the trap within 60 seconds. Now, with this one, I mainly just resorted back to what I knew from previous Saw movies, whether that was Saw 1, 6, and 7, whether it was from Amanda Young, or Hoffman, or Jill Tuck. With this one, I did notice there was a glass mirror in the bathroom of which he was stationed and strapped to, and I'd recommend he basically just breaks the glass mirror with the chair or the TV in the room with him as well, and basically use a shard of glass to cut open his mouth like Detective Hoffman did at the end of Saw 6, and then use a pipe on the sink or any other surrounding wall to prevent the contraption from opening. He could also find something like the leg of a chair or even a bit of fabric from his own clothing to jam the gears in the device preventing it from opening. Or, in other words, like I had provided with the Venus flytrap or the reverse bear traps in previous movies in the Saw franchise as well, I would recommend that Detective Tap took his time rather than being hasty and panicking considering he this is canon to the original Saw movie, which makes no fucking sense if you think about it considering, you know, he kind of died in the first one after being shot by Zepp Hindle, but he knew of Amanda Young and her trial with the reverse bear trap in Saw 1, so he should know that there was a pin contraption at the back or he could have just been a little bit more observant. With this knowledge, he could have just been a little bit more patient and not so hasty and do all the previous steps I had just mentioned while doing so preventing pulling the pin which would activate the device. Next up we have the detox chair. This is the second trap a part of David Tapp's trial where this trap takes place in the Whitehurst Insane Asylum. This trap consisted of three parts, a medical chair with two syringes positioned at the wrist that Amanda Young was strapped into, an empty chair with two syringes positioned at the neck level, and a sorting machine. Once the game began, the two syringes injected Amanda with a deadly poison. Tap then sits down on the chair next to her, causing the two syringes on the chair to thrust into his neck and inject him with a deadly poison, requiring a different antidote than Amanda's toxin. Tap had to use a large machine in the center and sort each of the different colored antidotes into the right chair, the red vials going into Amanda's and the blue ones going into Tap. Now with this trap, neither Tap or Amanda have yet to be injected. Each of you will be injected with different poisons that will slowly break down your bodies. With this said, if Tap doesn't sit down in the chair, neither him or Amanda would actually be injected with the poison or the antidotes in general, giving them an unlimited amount of time to beat this trap and figure out a better method to survive. I also noticed that the mechanical system holding the needle that would inject Amanda and Tap is incredibly fragile and very thin, almost like a compass that you would use in your, you know, year 11 math class. All Tap would really need to do is yank on this and rip it or bend the bars because the connections are also very small, tiny screws, it seems. It also looks incredibly fragile, as I said, very thin, very brittle. It wouldn't take much to break them. So if he did this and broke every needle, it really wouldn't take much for the trap to then start as it is meant to, but then it wouldn't inject either Tap or Amanda with poison, nor the detoxes either. He could even block the cogs that are in the chairs that activate and control the contraption with anything surrounding such as wires or fabric or clothing or other furniture even like leg chairs as I said in a previous trap with the reverse bear trap. Or one other observation I made was the poison seems to be in vials next to the contraption that are very exposed. Just breaking and spilling the poison or even the antidotes while also disabling the needles should prevent poison from being injected, therefore the puzzle and antidote is not required in the first place. I don't know, this is just my best means of surviving this one. I don't know if you all agree with me, but that's just how this video is going to go. As I said, a lot of this is going to be bullshit because of the design of the game and the contraptions themselves. They're not really meant to be beaten aside from their intended methods. Next up is the pendulum trap. The victim of the pendulum trap this time around was Jennings Foster. It was the third major part of David Tapp's trial at the Whitehurst Insane Asylum. Jennings' arms and feet were strapped to a metal table with shackles and three panels containing gears of various sizes. Positioned to the right and the left of the table were two long metal columns. Mounted to their upper ends was a contraption which held a large blade in the shape of a pendulum. Once the game began, the pendulum started to swing back and forth and would be lowered down in regular intervals and eventually split Jennings in two. His survival depended on Tap, who had to connect them by putting more additional gears of varying sizes between them. If one series of gears was connected successfully, the pendulum, if lowered down already, would return to its original position, thereby granting Tap more time to finish the task. With the pendulum, this is one of the ones where I just called bullshit on the
on the entire thing because there doesn't seem to be anything really activating the trap in the first place, whether it's to lower it, whether it's to raise it or anything. There really doesn't seem to be any major electronics in the arm itself that is lowering and raising it with the gears. I don't know what the bullshit about the gears is because the gears under the table are sometimes moving, sometimes they're not, whether you implement the right size gears into each panel or not. This trap is a bunch of bullshit and felt like a major oversight in regards to development and design. Seriously, there doesn't seem to be anything remotely activating it. There seems to be no major electrical circuit aside from one which I'll talk about very briefly, but I highly doubt it's controlling the entire mechanism. And not only that, the cogs don't seem to stand any purpose whatsoever. It's just poor game design. But my advice, if say hypothetically the gears underneath the panels were moving, because hypothetically speaking, for those gears on the panels to be moving, the ones underneath need to be moving. And if you implement the other gears, maybe it creates like an electrical circuit that would raise it. I don't fucking know. Just hypothetically block the gears and everything which prevent it from moving and therefore the contraption wouldn't be able to do its thing either. I don't know, you could do this with the surrounding chair or you could do this with loose pipes or enough clothing if you're able to lay it enough. I don't know. This this just seems like a bunch of crap, this trap. But I will say, it does seem to be controlled by a weight that is swinging it back and forward at the top of the contraption. If in some way you can stop the weighted motion, the blade would become idle and would no longer be able to swing or be a threat in general. And by completing the trap the way it is intended, we do see that it is controlled by a very small electrical circuit at the head where the weights are positioned. If you disable these electronics somehow very carefully because you might be in the way of the swinging blade, if you're able to do this manually, it could cause it to malfunction at the right moment and could disable the device entirely. I don't know, as I said, like many following traps, this one's just a bunch of crap. Next up, we have the Iron Maiden. The victim of this trap was Melissa Singh, who, if you don't recognize the name Singh, she is actually the wife of Detective Singh from Saw 1, who died while in the company of Detective Tap while pursuing Jigsaw. In this trap, Melissa stood on a pedestal and was held in place by two boot-like contraptions. In the center of the pedestal was a large winch. Attached to it were two elongated plates, one behind and one in front. Of Melissa. There were six circular saw blades mounted to each of the plates. To survive, she had to rely on the help of David Tap. Positioned around the trap were three large glass boxes containing magnetic cubes. Tap had to move these cubes to the correct circuit in order to short circuit the saws. Failing to avoid shorting out the batteries holding the plates with the saws in place would have resulted in both plates slamming shut on Melissa and ending her life as she stood. Now, in this trap, the wires that we see exposed and laid all over the floor seem to be attached to the in game puzzle device. So, Disabling them could prevent any means of stopping the trap and survival in general, so I honestly don't recommend ripping these like I normally would. It is also said after six strikes with the electrical circuits, the trap closes causing death. Disabling the batteries at the base of the contraption could also disable the trap, but could also activate the device as they seem to be what is preventing the trap from shutting in the first place. In some way, you could probably try to remove the door bars and pry them off the hinges. The device wouldn't be able to close this way. It seemed to be a single hinge hinge and a single bar on each panel, both behind and in front of Melissa. So if you could find a way to knock them out of place or to completely remove them, you might be able to stop the contraption. You could also, once again as a solution, use surrounding objects like furniture or the TV to block the closing device to buy time and figure out a way to get Melissa out of the leg shackles. Because if you put a TV or a table or anything else in between, to block the contraption if it's not heavy enough and doesn't have enough force to close all the way, crushing the device and killing Melissa in the process as well, if you're able to stop it from closing, then you have basically an unlimited amount of time unless the device that you chuck in the middle will eventually give way. There's also really no time limit on this puzzle because it is just reliant on the electrical magnetic circuits that TAP has to figure out. So therefore, if you're just patient and look at your surroundings, I'm sure there's another way to do this, but with the quick cut editing and the flashes and the really really crappy motion blur all over this game i really can't see anything else in this contraption that could possibly save melissa so this is another blow once again and a real blow to my ego up until this point i feel like i've been pretty good at how to survive all these traps in the movies but this game is really really throwing me for a fucking loop next up is the backbreaker the victim of this trap was oswald mcgillicuddy and the backbreaker was a mechanical chair which was mounted onto a pedestal in a prone position originally the chair was designed as a medical restraint 
for aggressive patients with psychotic disorders. It consisted of several movable segments which could be moved in different directions. In detail, there were segments for the fixation of Oswald's legs, back, head, as well as two restraints for his arms, which were spread to both sides. Once the game began, the arm segments were slowly twisted backwards and thereby bent Oswald's arms until they broke. After that, the same would be done with his back until the spine broke, resulting in Oswald's death. To survive, he had to rely on the help of David Tapp. Within four minutes, Tapp had to reverse the electrical motors of the trap by bypassing three circuit panels on the walls. This one I'm a little bit relieved by because there is one big flaw in this trap that makes it an absolute walk in the park to bypass, and that is bicycle chains. <laughs> bicycle chains act as the pulley system to break each limb and the back. If you block or remove the bicycle chain off of each limb of the contraption, the contraption won't work and won't be able to twist and pull each limb and Oswald's back. Therefore, basically guaranteeing his survival. The next thing is just getting him out of his shackles, essentially. Although, if I observe this trap, there really doesn't seem to be anything at all holding him in place. He could kind of just slip out like butter. But at the same time, he dies anyway, so let him die. I'd rather that than have to deal with these stupid electrical circuits. When I played this game on stream, this thing was miserable. I mean, I wanted to throw my fucking controller. Seriously, who the fuck designed this? Fuck these circuits. Next on the list of bullshit traps that this one is actually completely fucking unbeatable aside from its intended method in this fucking game is the crematorium. The victim of this trap was our favorite burn victim, Arby Tate. The crematorium was a large walkable oven used for the disposal of the bodies of deceased patients of the Whitehurst and St. Asylum. However, it was eventually turned into a deadly trap by Jigsaw. Arby Tate was trapped inside the oven, which was big enough for the person to stand and move around inside. Once the game began, the heat inside the furnace increased and would eventually burn Obi alive. To survive, he had to rely on the help of Tap. In order to save Obi from the oven, Tap had to reroute the gas lines heading to the burners of the furnace. This one is bullshit! Bullshit, I say! Bullshit! There is absolutely no fucking way in hell you are meant to beat this trap aside from its intended method by realigning the gas valves. The door windows on either side are too small to break and crawl through. There really is no real solution aside from solving the puzzle and shutting down the valves or rerouting them through the sorted pipe puzzle. The trap and fire is ignited underneath Obi and nothing is exposed as such to prevent the flames or shut down the device aside from the valves Tap has to fiddle with. There's not even an opening big enough to pass something to Obi to obstruct the fire beneath him. Like maybe that back window could be smashed and could have something pass through or have him crawl out but I honestly think that this is barred or caged off like this front one we see here and we don't see anything due to poor render distance or a low count of polygons. Seriously, I just think this is really bad visuals. Like the game just can't render in the other fucking cage or the other fucking bars. Like I just, it, it felt, I don't think Jigsaw is that fucking stupid. Seriously, I mean it. Aside from its intended method and the bullshit fucking puzzle that you have to do as the player, there is no other way to beat this trap. Fuck this trap, let Obi die. He was pissed off you saved him anyway. You ruined my game! It was mine, not yours! What are you talking about? And finally, for Saw the video game, we have the Impaler Trap. The victim of this trap was Jeff Riddenhall. In this trap, Jeff was strapped to a metal platform in a standing position. Behind the platform was a machine with several long, thin, pointy metal pikes. To survive, he had to rely on the help of David Tapp. There were 16 monitors, each one with a different picture on the screen. Tapp had to play a bullshit matching game and had to choose which two pictures fitted together until all eight pairs were found. For every mistake, one of the metal spikes rushed through a tiny hole in the platform and pierced Jeff's body. It was pulled back again if Tap found a correct pair of pictures. After five mistakes in a row, the final spike pierced Jeff's head, killing him in the process. This one also seems like bullshit, but I feel like if you just fiddled with the spikes, which are actually exposed, by the way, behind the contraption, just go and fiddle with them a little bit and they'd be a little bit off course from being able to go through the little holes in, you know, the big metal board. And I highly doubt that these would be able to pierce the metal board it seems a little bit too thick and a little bit too strong and I think that's why there are holes in the first place because if they were able to pierce it what is the point of the holes? But my preferred method is the spikes are exposed behind the board that Jeff is cuffed to anyway, so grab any possible obstruction that could potentially stop the pikes from piercing Jeff's body and place them up against the metal board anyway. 
or you could use clothing or a large item and tap surroundings to block and jam the cogs that are clearly visible and clearly exposed of which are moving the pikes providing more time and opportunities to solve the puzzle. There's also a lot of wiggle room for Jeff. He's only bound by arm shackles so he could potentially lower his body enough minimizing the area of which he could be impaled as well as ruling out the top spikes from being able to impale him as well. He'd only have to worry about the lower one and makes himself a smaller target in the process as well. There's also the curtains behind the contraption as well. My final method of surviving this one would be if the curtain has enough leeway and reach, you could possibly use that to completely jam and fry the device in the cogs, causing it to hopefully stall and malfunction. Now it's just a way of getting him out of his shackles, but in the end, like, none of this fucking matters. There's no real ending to this game, because even after all is said and done, after saving all of these people, most of these people die anyway, or Detective Tap chooses freedom or truth, where he either goes back to his apartment and kills himself, or he is put into an assailant asylum for the rest of his life. This is a fucking shit show of a video. Unlike every other How to Beat video, which was actually fucking constructed well, I felt like I had good solutions to be able to survive every trap. This had nothing, and I feel like that is all boiled down to poor game design and also poor contraption design. I understand that the backbreaker was the original idea behind the rack for Saw 3, but certain complications made them redesign it to what the rack turned out to be. But at the same time, like a lot of these traps are just completely unbeatable and a, it was a lot of me just reusing the same solutions due to exposed gears or wires and a lot of bullshit to try and beat every trap in this game. Like it's just a mess and I know for a fact that Saw 2 Flesh and Blood is even worse. Look forward to that video coming very soon, guys. I am very happy to be back from my hiatus. I hope you're all excited. Content will be different going forward. It won't just be movie reactions. I will be bringing back a lot of the movie reviews, a lot more consistent content, maybe a bit of trailer reactions. I want to do a little bit more deep dives. I want to do more how to beat videos, whether that's for Hostel, Human Centipede, all those sorts of films. I feel like it'd be a lot more fun if I had a little bit more variety of my content moving forward rather than, rather than just one. There will also be zero time constraints so it won't be a set schedule of every Saturday or every Monday or every Sunday that I do an upload I want to try and upload one to two videos a week and not restrain myself to a schedule I want to try and do it in my own time so I don't suffer from burnout again because I really do want to make content again and I want to have more freedom to do what I want to do I will be bringing back the Saw content moving forward as well mainly for the reason that the new Saw movie is coming out and I actually have a lot of ideas going forward after I do my How to Beat Saw 2 Flesh and Blood. Look out for all those videos coming very soon, guys. I'm so glad to be back. I hope you all enjoyed. Look out for more videos coming very soon. If you did enjoy, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit the bell to get notified when videos are up every single week because we are back, baby. I've got more videos coming soon. Make sure to click the subscribe button. Make sure to comment down below what you think and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.